Well, I'm Graham Summer, and I'm a professor of radiology at Stanford University Medical Center. VPH stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia, and what it is is a very, very common condition that tends to occur in men as they age. In fact, in men that are in their 60s and 70s, say, about 80% will have evidence of VPH. About 30%, for instance, of men who are in their 60s will have either moderate to, to severe symptoms that's caused by this BPH. So it's a very, very common. When you have BPH, what happens is that there's a particular part of the prostate enlarges. And this enlargement obstructs the urethra, the tube between the bladder and the draining the bladder. And it uh, causes a partial obstruction that results in not only diminished flow, but also in changes in the bladder that are undesirable and lead to problems with general voiding over time. Well, there basically are two types of treatments. One of them is medical, and then one of them is surgical. Now, the medical treatments in recent years have become more successful, and there are a couple of main types. One of the uh, classes, which blocks male hormones, cause it has significant side effects, and these include things like loss of libido and loss of muscle mass. These are really undesirable things. If you'd like to have what we call a minimally invasive technique, that would be a technique that would be less dramatic. It would, it would uh, not have the side effect that the surgical procedure would, and yet it would relieve the obstruction to as great an extent. It would like be the perfect solution. You could go into your doctor's office and maybe in half an hour have a definitive procedure and over, t over a few days your urinary stream would be restored to normal. This is really the dream and it's a realistic dream. We developed devices that work very well so far and the only model that we have for it that's currently is a canine model. Dogs do develop BPH. We've been able to show that we can ablate very uh, successfully that part of the prostate that's causing the obstruction. I think the devices need a bit more development, but by saying a bit, it's really not very much more at all. And of course, the heating is monitored currently with magnetic resonance imaging, and that's, that's been developed to really an, uh, an extent that, that is, is satisfactory for this. The, the devices that we use are directly put into the urethra as a catheter is. And since the urethra is positioned directly adjacent to the part of the prostate that's causing the obstruction, you can aim these sound waves at that part of the prostate and you can basically ablate or destroy it. This will cure the obstruction and cure the disease. In order for this to be successful, we would need to work eventually with a company in order to get the, the clinical testing done and the approvals, which would allow this to enter the mainstream of American healthcare. And there's good reasons for a corporate partner to be involved. Look at the numbers I'm talking about. A hundred thousand surgical procedures a year that could be replaced. There's no other killer app that I can think of in the whole field that's as big as that. When people uh, learn about it and when it's in a little further state of development, I think there'll be a lot of interest.